Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of kinematics titled Dots and Graphs. So we're going to be comparing dot diagrams to position time graphs and velocity time graphs. Um, first of all, if you need some help with dot diagrams, I'm going to link here a video on acceleration that starts out with a description of dot diagrams. So if you need more description of that, go there. Um, if you need more description of position time graphs, I'm going to link here a video on position time graphs. And so let's get into comparing the two. So first of all, we see that on a position time graph, if something's moving to the right, by the way, on these you will see an arrow like this, okay? And so if it's moving to the right, that means it's got a positive slope, and so it's sloping up. If it's moving to the left, it has a negative slope, and it's sloping down. So that's going to allow you to eliminate half of the choices for each, uh, each dot diagram. Then if you see that the uh, dots are close together, then that means it's moving slowly because it's not getting far, very far each second. And that's going to represent be represented by a fairly flat part of the curve. Whereas if it is far apart, okay, dots are spread out, then uh, it's moving fast, which means a steep part of the slope, like the end of five here, the end of four, the beginning of one, and the beginning of three. Okay, so let's go through each of these. Right now we'll do it for a rightward moving object, and later we'll do it for a leftward moving object. Okay, I'm going to use green to represent what happens at the beginning of the motion, and blue to represent what happens at the end of the motion. All right, so we want to match up what's happening at the beginning of the motion with what's happening at time zero. Okay, or at the beginning. And we want to match up what's happening at the end of the motion with what's going on at the end of the race or at the end of the motion. All right, so uh, first of all, number one here we see starts out close together. And we know close together means slow, which means a flat line. So actually, you know what, before we do that, <laughs> I forgot. The most important thing is it's going to the right. If it's going to the right, it means it's sloping up. Number one is sloping up. It starts out lower and it ends up higher. Two is sloping up. Three is sloping down, so it couldn't be that. Four is sloping up. Five and six are sloping down. So the three things here, number what we have over here is number one, two, and three, must be one, two, and four over here. All right, now let's get back to the fact that this is going slowly. So that's going slowly, which means it starts out with a fairly flat. Well, one starts out pretty steep, so that's not going to be right. Two starts out kind of steep. Four starts out really flat. Let's use the end to double check that. We see that it ends up going really fast. Fast means steep, and this ends up very steep. So that means this one is number four. Okay, next we see that we have one that starts out going kind of medium and continues going medium the whole way. It's the same distance the whole way across. So that means we're looking for a straight line. Uh, because it's moving right, it's going to be sloped up. So uh, two here starts out kind of medium speed and continues going medium speed the entire way. So this is going to be number two. Finally, we see that uh, this one down here starts out going very fast, which means we're looking for a steep line. And there's a steep line. And it ends up going quite slow. And so we end up with a fairly flat line. So this is number one. All right, now let's redo this for leftward motion, which in my experience has been the most challenging for students. And I'll try and help you figure out why so you don't have that problem. And here it is. The very first thing, if this object is moving to the left, that means it started over here. It started on this side. And then it moved this direction and it ended up over here. Okay, well remember starting on a position time graph is time zero. So over here is the beginning. So whatever is going on on the right side here at the beginning of the motion needs to match what's happening at the beginning of the graph. 
Okay, because we're used to reading left to right, people flip the dot diagram around, even though they know it's moving left, and they end up getting it backwards. So if you do this, different colors helps a lot, but you can probably do it in your head. Um, refer back to this part of the video if you have any trouble with your leftward moving objects. So this one starts out moving very fast. Okay. Oh, uh, but first let's circle the ones that work with a leftward motion. Left means negative. So it's sloping down. So that would be three, five, and six are sloping down. One, two, and five are, one, two, and four are sloping up. Okay. So this one is moving fast at the beginning. So we look for one of the ones we just marked that's moving fast at the beginning. And sure enough, three is moving quite fast at the beginning and it's moving down or in a negative direction which is left as we define here it ends up going very slow let's see if that matches yep three ends up going very slow okay so this one is three then we get to our next one here once again starts out at a medium speed ends up at the same medium speed all the way along the dots are evenly spaced so we find one that starts out at an even pace, medium pace, and ends up at the same medium pace at the end. Okay, so this one must be number six. All right, the final one here we have, it starts off going really slow. So we look for one that starts off going really slow. And we see number five here starts off going really slow. Notice four also starts off going really slow, but it's it's sloped up, so it was moving right. So that's why we can ignore that one. This one ends up moving very fast. And so five ends up moving very fast. That matches this one must be number five. All right, so that's what you go through. You get three at a time. You figure out which ones they match, and you're good to go. All right. Um, back to the mouse. The master level now deals with velocity time graphs. Okay, so now um, uh, things that are moving right are in the po are positive and therefore in the positive portion of the graph. In other words, um, things that are positive, uh, we'll go ahead and make that red. Things that are positive, well, red doesn't show up very well. We'll go orange. So things that are positive would be one and two and four. Okay, so things that are going to the right end up in the positive part of the graph. We'll use this purple color for things that are going negative. So things that are going negative would be three, five, and six. Okay, then um, things that are uh, close, uh, that are going slow. So when you see dots close together, that's going to represent things that are close to zero. Okay, so in that range. And when uh, things are going fast, they're spread out like we see over here, that's gonna represent things with either a big positive or a big negative. In other words, they're far from zero. Okay, far from zero means fast. Your speedometer is reading a big number. Okay, let's go through each one and see of the four examples that I have here. And there are more examples that you'll have, but you should be able to piece them together if you have this knowledge. So once again, we'll start off with green. So we see we start off with green here. They're kind of far, far spaced apart, but first notice that it's moving right. So if it's moving to the right, that means we're looking at a positive uh, number, one, two, or four, uh, things that are in the positive part of the graph, okay? At the beginning, we saw it was far spaced apart. That means it was moving fast. That means it's far from zero. So this is the farthest from zero. Two is a little ways from zero. And uh, one actually starts out stopped. Okay. Um, so then we look at what happens at the end. At the end, they're close together. So we want something that starts out far from zero and ends up close to zero. This one ends up the closest to zero. It's slowing down, which is what we see there. So this one is number four. Okay, moving on to the next one, we see that it is moving to the left. So that means, oops, oh well. Uh, that means we now have a choice of three, five, and six, because those are the things that are negative. 
Okay, remember if it's moving to the left, that means these ones happened first because it started here and then it moved that way. Okay, and this one started out moving fast. So that looks like five or six and it ends up close together. It means it's going slow, which means close to zero. And so this one ends up close to zero. So this would be five. Right, we said this one was four. Okay, all right. So next, we see that it's moving left still. So it's still the circled ones over there, three, five, and six. And at the beginning, it's moving slowly. So we're looking for something that starts out close to zero. Well, that one starts out close to zero. And we see that it ends up going quite fast. And so which one's far from zero? Well, three is far from zero. Six is also far from zero, but didn't start close. So that means this one has to be three because it started out, um, it started out close to zero and it ended up far from zero. That's what we see here. Once again, in the negative direction. All right, finally, we have our final one down here. Starts out kind of medium spaced apart, ends up medium spaced apart, never changes speed. It must be um, the same speed the whole time. Well, if it's the same speed, this is measuring speed over here. And so it must keep the same number the whole time. So number six here keeps the same number the whole time. Okay, so this must be number six. Now there are some that, like some questions that have you determine between several straight lines like a straight line for number six and this other straight line. Okay, well, this straight line is at a smaller number, which means it's going slower, which means the dots would be closer together. So if you saw one with the dots closer together, okay, like that, still moving to the left, then you choose this new line here that's closer to zero. So remember, the closer the dots are, the closer to zero it is. And that should get you through the second, uh, the master level, the wizard level. The wizard level just combines the di diagrams and, descript and descriptions from the apprentice and wizard level. Okay, so you might have one graph that's position time and one that's velocity time, and you have to figure out which dot diagram goes with which uh, motion. All right, we'll enjoy puzzling those out. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and it helped you to do the concept builder, please click that like and subscribe button. And we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.